happy 4th of July. We hope that you are enjoying a holiday full of fireworks, cookouts, and parades. But remember, it's also America's birthday. And when the Declaration of Independence was signed back in 1776, we were all given the ultimate gift, the gift of freedom. Hello everyone, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin, and we are so excited to be on board the legendary battleship, the USS Iowa, as KTLA 5 celebrates America. And what an amazing piece of history right here in the Port of Los Angeles. It is awe-inspiring to be on the very ship that served our country for over 50 years. And due to her big guns, heavy armor, and exceptional speed, she's been given the title of the world's greatest naval ship. And we are fortunate to have such a symbol of the American spirit docked in our Southern California waters. I can't help but think of those who bravely served on and below these decks. And you know, Cher, part of KTLA's pride is having the privilege to witness the inspiring stories of our veteran neighbors. Now, as KTLA celebrates America, our Chris Wolf is at a remarkable reunion that reveals the real heartbeat behind those who fight and fought for the red, white, and blue. It was a hero's welcome as a band of brothers, soldiers who survived unimaginable experiences in the jungles of Vietnam, were reunited for the first time in more than 40 years. The last time they saw each other was during combat in Southeast Asia when a mission went terribly wrong. This man, Michael Goode, nicknamed Dutch, had his right leg blown off and was bleeding out. You have to open a water tap. That's the way the blood came out of my leg. He was messed up and stepped on a landmine. He was bleeding out. We got the tourniquet on him. I had a headband I put on him. Grady here was able to take a belt off of this man. He had a belt and a 22 pistol. We put the belt on him, we twisted it tight. We were screaming for him to get a helicopter in to get us out. The last thing this man said to me then is, hold me, I'm dying, hold me, I'm cold. When we got off the helicopter, they took him in the aid station. We haven't seen him, that was it. You see, they lost touch because they didn't know each other's full names, just nicknames. And the heroes who actually saved Dutch's life didn't even know they had done so, but times changed. I uh, had just happened to catch the end of a, a Vietnam era movie. Had looked uh, looked up my father-in-law's name on the internet and was shocked to find a, a message board that there was somebody looking for him. My life is complete, so if it ends today, I had a beautiful life. And what a story. I am so proud to live in a city mm -hmm. where we honor those men and women that risk and sacrifice their lives just to protect ours. They certainly are the real heroes. And make no mistake, our fight for freedom still continues. And many of our enlisted are coming home with injuries that will last a lifetime. After years in Iraq, then Afghanistan, exploding bombs and hailstorms of bullets became background noise for 29-year-old Charlie Linville. But after two deployments, the husband and father of two young girls had his closest brush with death in January of 2011 when he stepped on an IED. Charlie loses two of his fingers, head trauma, and his foot is mangled. When Tim Medvitz of the Heroes Project heard Charlie's story, he was instantly intrigued by the tenacity and heart of the wounded warrior who opted to have his mangled foot and lower half of his leg amputated. The doctor advises him not to do it. He says, I don't care. I want to play with my kids. I don't want to live a life in pain. Medvitz has given wounded warriors like Charlie new challenges, like climbing to the tallest peaks on every continent. The ultimate way to show these heroes their injuries cannot and will not limit them. Medvitz has decided he will summit the formidable Mount Everest with Charlie. He has no idea. He thinks I'm calling him to talk about training for a potential climb coming up in the future, but has no idea that it's Mount Everest. This Skype call is not talking about your training. The Skype call is to ask you if you would like to go climb Mount Everest in 2014. More than anything. You need to make a clear decision in your mind and in your life that you might not come back. One in five people who attempt to summit Everest will make the ultimate sacrifice doing it, and they have all their limbs, but that doesn't deter Charlie. Are you ready to make that decision? Yeah. If I've gotten him back twice from combat in the infantry and EOD, you damn well better bring him home to me. No. <laughs> Do you understand me? 
Because if he doesn't come home, you better not come home. Because for Charlie, if he let fear or having one less limb stop him, then that would mean he wasn't truly living at all. And what bigger way to live than summit the biggest mountain of them all with just one lake? Train and stand on the top of the world and say, what now? I mean, I, I've conquered you, world. I conquered you after I, I lost a limb, after I've had all these injuries. It's the 4th of July, a time to celebrate, but also a time to remember. And now our friend Buckley does just that. Detail, tanch, hut, right, peace, port, arms. The Marines on duty at Riverside National Cemetery are with the Memorial Honor Detail Team, known as Semper Fi number one. If you look closely, you'll notice that these Marines are a little older than those who usually stand duty. These Marines are no longer on active duty. They served in that role as young men. Today, some of these Marines are in their 70s, yet they continue to serve on one of the 35 all-volunteer Memorial Honor Detail teams that provide military committal services for every veteran who served honorably and who wants military honors at the end of their lives. This is something that every veteran deserves. Their leader, Mac McLean, says that's true even when it's one of their own, as it was a couple of years ago when Corporal Calvin Denu of Semper Fi No. 1 learned he had a terminal illness. And it turned out Calvin Denu was also one of our own. Mr. Denu's son-in-law was Henry DiCarlo. I always felt I was very lucky. I had two great fathers. He was like a father to me. And as his second father lay dying, Mr. Denu asked Henry to make him a promise. He said, Henry, please, two things. Take care of my daughter. And, uh, you know, recognize these men. And so today, we fulfill that promise. I knew firsthand just how important these military honor details are to the veterans and their families, because just over a year ago, my own dad was laid to rest here at Riverside National Cemetery. Master Chief Bill Buckley was a hospital corpsman who treated sailors and Marines for 30 years. My dad had a Navy honor detail team. Henry's father-in-law was a Marine, and when the end came for him, his Marines were the ones who made sure his uniform was just right, that he had the military honors he deserved. And Semper Fi number one is there for every veteran, no matter the branch of service, there at their own expense, volunteering three days a month to fulfill a promise made to every veteran who has served this nation in uniform. Nobody left behind. Forever guided by the Marine Corps motto, Semper Fi, always faithful. There is no better way to celebrate America's birthday than to celebrate the people who let freedom ring. And coming up on board the USS Iowa, KTLA 5 celebrates America by flying high in the Southern California skies with the Thunderbirds. Plus, where to shop made in America? And then our star-spangled salute to all our military men and women. Don't go anywhere. Our celebration is full throttle ahead. Thank you for the compliments, Cher and Micah. I certainly don't know all there is to know about one of the world's most famous battleships, but you are correct. It is 887 feet long overall. That's four feet longer than the Titanic. And one of the reasons this vessel was nicknamed the Big Stick.
You should also know that this battleship has earned 11 battle stars for its participation and the damage it suffered during World War II and the Korean conflict. So it was an honor for KTLA to be allowed to witness and broadcast live the arrival at San Pedro of the USS Iowa. She is still the largest surface warship in the world. She's uh, ranked as the number one uh, most powerful warship in, in existence today. This battleship is an unparalleled presence on the ocean. Today, the USS Iowa continues to keep U.S. history afloat for thousands of visitors, curious and patriotic alike. I'm so proud to be an American and so proud to be from Iowa, I could bust. The red, white, and blue spirit remains unwavering for more than 70 years of military service. She was in World War II, of course. She was commissioned in 43. She was pulled back into commission for the Korean conflict and she fired uh, thousands of rounds during the Korean conflict. And then she was pulled out of commission again in the late 50s, but brought back a third time in the 1980s during the Cold War. This historic vessel has hosted world leaders. One of her first missions was to uh, take FDR, President Roosevelt and his entire Joint Chiefs of Staff, over to, the, uh, to Casablanca for the uh, Tehran Conference, the first conference with uh, Stalin. We have a bathtub that was installed for Roosevelt in addition to other modifications, which include cutting the doors down to the, uh, the deck um, to allow the wheelchair to go through here. The outstanding engineering of the era created this floating fortress. And the armor piercing can actually penetrate 30 feet of concrete and then the high explosive uh, round can actually create a 30-foot diameter crater in the ground. This massive bell is near the anchors, the anchors that it takes to stop the USS Iowa. They weigh 30,000 pounds. These links, take a look. Each one of them weighs 128 pounds, the weight of an average person. And when you come and visit, you'll learn that there are approximately a thousand links on each of these anchors. This ship is just amazing. It's got 14,000 valves in the mechanical plant, um, just hundreds of miles of wiring, hundreds of miles of piping. Uh, and it, it's just, a, in my opinion, the space shuttle of the 1940s. Docked and on display, the USS Iowa is still on duty, serving as a symbol of our nation's nautical prowess. To the veterans and the men and women who serve our country, we salute you on this 4th of July. We continue our celebration on the deck of the USS Iowa with Cher and Micah. Definitely like a history lesson from Auntie Gail. And there's much more coming up as KTLA 5 celebrates America. Shopping does the American spirit good. Where to buy USA goods? Plus, we are buckled up in the co-pilot seat for some adrenaline pumping action with the Thunderbirds. And then the sparks fly with our fireworks spectacular to salute our troops. Our Welcome back to KTLA 5 Celebrates America. I love the 4th of July, the food, the fireworks, and Cher's favorite, the shopping. Well, of course, y yes. Micah, how did you know? And this holiday, as we pledge allegiance, we also pledge to shop mm -hmm. till you drop for American-made products. As our Chris Burroughs finds, cool homemade goods are right in your backyard. The thrill of the cast and the adrenaline of the catch. Fly fishers rely on their reel to bring in the big one, and the top Made in America reels are made right here in Camarillo. Every screw, every you know handle, every uh, frame, every component is manufactured completely in our facility. It takes up to 15 hours to handcraft and paint each of these reels. That intense labor keeps 25 employees busy and has for a quarter of a century. The pride of ownership of owning something that is made here in the States, you know, by American craftsmen, uh, it's pretty cool. And from fashion to fashion. Whoever thought nylon seat belts would be a fashion statement? From Lakers labeled purses to Barbie branded bags, they are stylish, they're in demand, and they're made in America.
It only makes sense that handbags made out of seat belts would be created in car crazy Southern California. Harvey started crafting these in 1997 out of their factory in Santa Ana. We can go right out onto the production floor if we see something that could be like some step in the process that could be made better. You know, we can go right out there and implement that improvement right away. That ability to keep ahead of the trends is helping Harvey's seatbelt bags thrive in a fickle fashion industry. Hey, that's pretty cool. It's nice yeah. to see what we can find right here in SoCal. You know what else is cool? Flying with the Thunderbirds. Can you imagine taking to the skies in one of their cockpits? Well, our brave Frank Buckley got the joy ride of his life. Take a look. We're going to begin our journey right here at Nellis Air Force Base just outside of Las Vegas in this, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. That's what I'll be flying in, but before I go up, I've got to get out of this and into the proper attire. Let's get going. A lot of guys have worked really hard to get this patch, so uh, wear with honor today. Say you're honorary Thunderbird, so enjoy. Thank you. Next up, a medical briefing from the flight doctor. Sign your life here? I say sign your life away, but did you get that? <laughs> and finally, a meeting with my pilot for today's flight, Major Tyler Ellison. I'll say go by Wolf. Nice All to right. meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Thank you. He gave me a quick overview of what I could expect in the air. And you're going to hear me say, get ready, here comes some G's. Okay. Major Ellison filled me in on the types of maneuvers we'd be performing this afternoon. They were the very same ones that the Thunderbirds performed during their air shows. Then it was off to the flight line. Where it was time to suit up. Are you going to want the DVA off the runway 3 or a class bravo? Yeah, Thunder 7, we can take a VFR departure. Finally, it was time to get airborne. Our first maneuver, a 400 mile per hour 6G climb straight up to 16,000 feet. quick photo, and then the real fun begins. It was the ride of a lifetime, and no, I didn't pass out, and I didn't get sick. But I was exhausted at the end of our 75-minute flight. It was like an intense workout, a workout with the best of the best, U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. What an experience of a lifetime. And just like being right here on this honorable battleship. Thank you for celebrating America with KTLA 5. You know, we consider ourselves a family here. And on this 4th of July, we salute yours. No matter our race or religion, as Americans, we are all one. A special thank you to our veterans and the men and women who serve this country. KTLA 5 appreciates you. Now, don't go anywhere. The biggest fireworks display on the West Coast begins. It is time for the Big Bay Boom.